here we are, this time with the mics live and hot. That was just a practice run. And uh, welcome everybody to the MLG Championships, Winter Championships here in Columbus, Ohio. It's great to have you, the crowd here, going crazy. Uh, for everybody out there tuning in, please bear with us. We're going to get to this first game right away. It will be Huck versus Zake. So we got a little PvP action coming at you. So just give us one second and we will get to that game. Of course, we're going to redo introductions for you now that you can hear us. And to my right here is Kibbles. So Kibbles, your first event, your first live event. Now that people can actually hear you talk, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you feel about the event? Tumba, I am so excited. One year ago, almost to this date, uh, we had MLG Columbus. That was the first MLG event that I ever attended. And it... It changed my life uh, absolutely forever. You know, the uh, the amount of energy, the amount of passion that I, I experienced at that event gave me the, uh, such an incredible drive to uh, make the move in esports. I am incredibly excited to be here with MLG, guys. And uh, Tumba, I'm even more excited to do this game. We've got a rematch from Winter Arena. This is Huck versus Zake. What are your thoughts on this match, Tumba? Well, we saw Huck really win 2-0. Uh, he took a 2-0 in, uh, in the first series he played against uh, Zake at Winter Arena. So... Uh, you know, it's no question here that Zok is going to be the underdog in this matchup. Yeah. But as we were discussing earlier, uh, it's one of those things where Zake has had time to prepare for this matchup. Quite the European pro toss, so we'll have to see just how he does uh, in this match. And I, too, I, I keep mentioning it's going to be an emotional MLG for me because I really fell in love with StarCraft II and MLG Columbus last year. Who could forget when Idris Lings ran down the probe of OGSMC and we heard the crowd erupt. Uh, really, uh, it was emotional for me then. It's emotional for me now, so I'm just happy to be here. It looks like we are going to get underway here in just one second. We'll actually bring up player cards again as the players get ready. Thank you for joining us. We hope you guys have a great time. There's so many good matches here in store. Kibbles, I can't wait. I am so excited. Uh, Zach, uh, Zach, I'm a big fan of. I've seen uh, quite a few of his games, and, you know, uh, we were mentioned, talking about this earlier about you know the difference that training makes coming to an event like this. If we see Zok here have a uh, a fantastic series against Huck, you know a, a little less of a rollover uh, compared to what we saw at Winter Arena, mm. it's going to show that he's been studying. And if we see him win this, I think it's going to be a huge indicator as to how he's going to perform in the uh, rest of this event. Absolutely, well said, my friend. I'm just checking to make sure both players are ready, and we're going to get right into this game. Got the go, I'll go. Okay, guys, here we go. I'm super excited, man, because here we are. It's Winter Championships, Columbus, Ohio. The countdown has begun. In just one second, Kibbles is going to bring up the screen. And we shall be set to go. And Kibbles, why don't you go ahead and take away player introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, in the top right-hand corner of the board, we have our red pro Protoss player from the team Evil Geniuses. This is Huck. Huck going to be facing off in cross possessions against his opponent, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner here on MLG Antigua Shipyard. This from Team ATN, guys, is Zuck. Kibbles, wonderful job there. You remind me of a, like a boxing announcer. I'm super excited. I'm even more pumped up about this game now. So, of course, you know, PvP, the beginning, a little anticlimactic, not going to lie, unless there's uh, some sort of shenanigans going on. Typically, we see Gateway, Psychor, Gas, and then we get into the different builds. Yeah, man, has this matchup come a long way since it first started out of beta? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, if we think back to the origins of PvP, we remember a time that it was simply 4Gate versus 4Gate. Yeah. That is all it was. And we, uh, I remember actually, I was it uh, Orlando? I feel as if it may have been Orlando. We saw um, Naniwa go for this 3Gate robot. If, if I recall correctly, it was on Crossfire. Yes. And it revolutionized PvP. We saw uh, the combination of sentries and a gateway wall off be able to successfully hold off a 4Gate. And, and all of a sudden, PvP began to evolve. We saw the pylon radius reduction, the increases in, um, in these research times, and PvP has ever since just been getting better and better. So I'm really excited to see you know, now players have a multitude of options available to them, and we will, uh, we'll see exactly what both these guys do end up going with. Antigua Shipyard is a map that allows a ton of options. Uh, you can uh, Honestly, there's, there's scarcely any openings you can't go with. Perhaps uh, robotics aggression. 
would yeah. be the one thing I would really not encourage Absolutely, here. Absolutely, yeah. Such a long uh, cross long, distance. Long cross distance. Those immortals have a hard time hoofing it over there. Yeah. But I have to say also, though, you know, it's one of those things now, as we can see Huck adding a second assimilator. Uh, getting to cast with Grubby during the Winter Arena, he has a theory, which I, I actually have been watching a, a lot for lately here, and it used to be that you would only expand as Protoss uh, if you were way behind. And, and the person that expanded first typically lost the game. But now, yeah. PvP has gotten to a point, and, and Grubby has a theory that, you know what, first to expand actually has the advantage. So that's nice to see the PvP actually gotten to a point where, you know, we can get into a little bit longer of a game yeah. and allow the metagame to develop and, and turn into more of a chess game, if you will, a thinking man's game. Uh, we see a lot of things. We see everything from Void Ray to, uh, you know, um, a lot of uh, DT shenanigans. You know, there's all kind of different plays you can make now. Uh, one player going heavy Colossus while the other tries to hide air tech. So, you know, the matchup really starting to develop, as yeah. you said. And with the... I, I, I need to agree with uh, what you and, and, and Grubby were discussing in that case, because with the uh, devolution, uh, if you will, of the four game, you know, that's the move that kills the player who expands first. Yeah. And we, uh, we don't see it that often anymore. And since we don't, you can often get away with expansions, especially on maps that do have some defensive tendencies about them at the natural expansion, uh, such as here on Antigua. There is a good amount of open ground at the top, but it's nothing compared to a map such as Daybreak, for example, where you can come up that ramp, sit right outside, and there is just so much room for your opponent's army. Force fields are, are, are so difficult to be uh, very, very effective here. Guys, we see a Stalker moving out across the map here. Four Huckies bringing out a probe. Uh, at the exact same time, we see Zaki building a pylon up in the top left-hand corner um, inside that main. That is going to allow him to warp onto the low ground. Hawk has moved into the Twilight Council uh, tech ground and is currently researching Link. Right, and so I think that's uh, a great choice. The it is a great choice because Huck has phenomenal micro. So uh, Blink is one of those things in the hands of Huck that is very, very deadly. His unit retention is very good, which allows him to trade and uh, allows his economy to be that much stronger. Yep. An economy, by the way, that is rivaled by almost no other Protoss. He's known for making tons of probes, able to keep his economy nice and high, and uh, has really no problems in that. You couple that with the fact that he's got solid micro and unit retention, he's good. Now look at this. Okay, here comes Sake, and now Sake wants to go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on. One sentry out, though. Huck seems to be very comfortable at this point. Yeah, you know, he's got that sentry there. It's going to make uh, an infinite difference here. We did see a dark shrine, by the way, guys. If you look at that production tab at the top left, it's thrown down by Huck. Zake applying the pressure here. He has a Twilight Council inbound as well as a Robo. Now, this can, in some ways, allow him to expand with all of this. Uh, if he uses the Observer, it gives him vision on the high ground. He can blink up directly into the main Antigua Shipyard. Uh, I said a fantastic map for blink because you can blink straight into the main and run down the ramp. But right now, guys, notably, Huck has thrown down a wow. pylon here in the main of Zake. Has Zake seen this Dark Templar Shrine three quarters of the way done right now? You and know what, he though? he could send his Robo. Uh, when the Robo completes this Observer, it's all going to be about the timing. To be honest, I don't even know if it's going to matter with Huck having that pylon in the back of Zake's base. I mean, that is critical right there. Yep. And actually, Huck still has a probe there. Uh, Zake seems to have no clue uh, what's going on, and he's going to go ahead and expand behind this. So Huck, as we said, keeping his economy strong and actually going to go ahead and warp in DTs, and there they go. DTs going to work on the Robo already. Has the Zealot there as well. All probes now coming off the line. The question, as you said, though, can the Observer finish? And the Observer does get out seconds before that Robo goes down. That was a clutch play out of Zake there. The Dark Templar is now going to work on the mineral line of Zake. But the Stalkers arrive. A Force Field goes down to try to prevent the Dark Templar from escaping. One Dark Templar not micro properly there. Did get taken out. The other one was trapped. The Zealot going to be taken out as well. Nice play there out of Zake fending those off. How many probes did we see him lose, however, there? Because I do see he's down in food right now. Actually, hang on. As we see, currently, Huck is retreating. I, you know what? I thought he was going to actually pressure into this yeah. expansion first uh, due to the fact that he had Siege of the main there. And for that second, Sock was distracted. But Huck, seeing something he didn't like, would rather just hightail at home. Don't forget, though, uh, here's the difference. Huck's Nexus currently up and finished. Yeah, I mean, it's... You know, he went for this play that allows him to expand. It puts Zake on a back foot, uh, has to forces his army to come home in order to deal with those units. 
note, he warped in a Zealot with the Dark Templar. It was not simply the Dark Templar. He right. wanted to make sure there were enough units there to force oh. home a reasonable number and of units. And look at this. He's going to find the, the forward pylon there for Sock. Now, don't forget that is going to grant him vision, but it's okay because Huck is just going to go ahead and make sure that those Stalkers can get in a position to take that pylon out. Will Sock be able to get these Stalkers, though, and save the pylons? Oh, wow. He, in fact, will. Pylon only has uh, 22 hit points left, but it will stand. That was a nice play for Zaki, managing to retain that because now he doesn't have to send a probe out across the entire map once again. He can keep the pressure on his opponent here. Zealot moving down across the map right now, going to spot this sentry. Uh, and I'm actually wondering why exactly that sentry's out. You know what? It's trying to catch up to the army of Zake right now, which is running towards the natural expansion of Huck. Huck, though, has his army in position here. Yep, Huck has a good unit spread. Guardian shield popped, and here we go. You can see four skills going down. Big boss blink right into Zake, saying, I'm not even concerned with your stalker stall. Kill micro now out of Sock, as you can see him killing those stalkers back. Great micro uh, out of both players, actually. Huck. Really aggressive, yep. though. Super aggressive. Another blink forward here. Uh, really doing the damage. And you can see uh, Zok way down in supply currently. Uh, Huck enjoying a big supply lead here. 59 of 84 to 44 of 76 of Zok. Going to chase away those remaining units. And now the question for Huck is, does he just want to go pedal to the metal here and try to take out you know, this expansion? Yeah, I mean, look at that supply time, a 65 to 48 currently. Zaki in a, an extremely tough position, guys. Blink Stalker's looking and taking down one, two, three Stalkers. Gets a fourth, even gets oh, the fifth no. as it retreats onto the high ground. Zaki pulling the probes off the line, but I don't think it is going to be enough here, Samba, because he just used his torment of reinforcements, and they were instantly obliterated by the Stalkers of Huff. They certainly were obliterated. Great action to use in that case, and any time there's probes off the line, it's never a good sign right now. Huck just dominating Zake in this PvP. Yeah, this is uh, looking pretty close to over. I don't know if Zake can really much rally uh, things from here. Zealot reinforcements arriving for Huck, and I want to point out that that engagement we saw on the top right was really the deciding factor yes. here. Uh, Huck had the ability to reinforce his army instantly. Zake did not. His pylon was too far away, and he was there not able to reinforce. out of Zake. And unmute yourself. So essentially there, Kibbles, I think uh, it was sort of like we predicted initially. We knew Huck uh, was the favorite going into that yeah. match. However, you know, it's exactly what you said. It was that one key engagement uh, in Huck's corner. And But Sock had to move then. He knew. he The DTs had been revealed. He knew he had to inflict damage right away. Uh, he had lost some probes. So he was behind on economy, so he knew he had to make something happen, and you can't fault him for that. Had really good peel micro in the engagement, but the, between the Guardian shield and the aggressiveness of Huck, just wasn't able to beat him in that, yeah, that game. You know, and I, I can't emphasize enough the ability for Huck to reinforce there with all those warp gates. Uh, we saw such a drastic loss there for yeah. Zake, and it and, and really, really set him back in that game. And uh, ultimately, guys, Huck was able to take it now. Uh, Honestly, I, I think we if we could have seen better things come out of Zake. I know he does have the strength to, uh, honestly, to, to at least give Huck a good run there. But that game did look pretty one-sided, I think, just because of that engagement. Both players, you know, expanded around the same time, went for similar tech routes. Those DTs pulling back the timing of Zake, though, I think made a well, big know difference. Zake is one of those players that when he's comfortable, he plays well. It seems like in Europe, he's comfortable. Zake's been around for a long time. Uh, it's one of those things, though, I don't know if it's like a curse, like, you know, you have players like Rhett that have a hard time winning championships, but every yeah. time you can pick him to win one. Zake, maybe not as well known in that in that fashion, yeah. but I think he's really underplayed, underrated a lot of times. I really feel like once Zake gets his everything rolling in his favor, uh, he can perform and he can win a championship. I mean, he, he shows it regularly in Europe, but at these big events, he tends to have a problem. But let's face it, Huck... Not a very easy opponent to start off an MLG with. Yeah, if not I was all. playing in this tournament, Huck is not the first player I would choose to play against. I would choose to play against, actually, uh, Froden or Robin, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely love it, Dumbo. Guys, we uh, have got an invited into the lobby. We'll be jumping in this game in just a moment. I am Kibbles, having the pleasure today of casting with Tumba. Make sure you uh, hit him up on Twitter at TumbaSC. We love interacting with you guys. Huck versus Zake coming up here in just a second for you guys. The countdown Tumba has started. Yes, I the, countdown, the countdown has in fact begun, Kibbles.